Hey guys, this is Brad and Mike from Dallas Geek, and today we're going to be doing our first Know Your Directors video. Um, and of course it seemed absolutely appropriate to start with J.J. Abrams, since, since he's the greatest director ever. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of been involved in a few uh, of the big recent nerdy movies. Uh, w would you say a few? Yeah? Um, I think a few is probably understating it. Even though... He revived um, two of the classic sci-fi franchises. Yeah. Like, well, almost single-handedly. Even though uh, we are going to go ahead and preface this with, while he's done a lot of the movies that we've talked about, um, his overall directing credits is actually on the shorter end of the directors we're going to be covering. Four films. So. A couple TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and start. Um, so, the... I think the biggest place and best place to start is his pacing. Um, yeah. Mike, how would you describe J.J. Abrams' pacing for his movies? Um, he goes and goes and goes. And then when you think he's going to slow down, he just keeps on going. Um, his, <laughs> no, his action scenes are very frenetic, very fast-paced. Uh, you especially see that in Star Trek. Um... A lot of it is camera work. He knows how to use the right shots to really set an emphasis on how fast everything's moving or how fast everything's supposed to be moving. Yep. Um, you see it really well with Star Wars as well. Yes. Um, the assault on Starkiller Base. Yep. Well, even um, the escape from the First Order on Jakku. Yeah. Um, that is one of the best uh, examples of just non-stop action. Yeah. Uh, and he does that very, very well. But at the same time, he doesn't plan out most of his shots, okay. so all that fast-paced action is going to be consistently improvised. Right. Um, he he doesn't go into a scene with a specific shot in mind. He likes to play around with it to see, you know, oh hey, I never really thought that maybe this would work out, but let's go ahead and give it a try. Which can work to his benefit. But just as often can also work to uh, the audience's annoyance because when, uh, when he's trying to find what should be a certain scene, yeah. um, he has a tendency, and, and you can actually see this a lot in Star Trek mm -hmm. and uh, maybe even better in the pilot for uh, Lost. Um, better watch what you say. Well. That is the greatest TV show in the history of television. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to knock Lost. Mm -hmm. I, I am going to say that you can really see in that uh, episode um, that when he's trying to find what the emphasis of a scene should be, a lot of that ends up being left to the editing mm -hmm. rather than the camera. So the final result can be a little, we'll call it muddled. Um, and while you'll always feel the fast pace, you'll feel the action that he's trying to emphasize, you don't always have a specific point to follow in that scene, uh, a specific person. You'll, you'll be just trying to keep up with the scene. Um, but I also think that's on purpose, like especially in action scenes, because he's trying to... He's trying to illustrate well, how hectic what's happening to the characters is. Sure, but... I can definitely understand where some audience members have a problem with him in that regard no, because nobody should like, ever have a problem with JJ. Well, like for example, in the uh, in his first uh, run with Star Wars, uh, uh, not Star Wars, Star Trek. Um, whenever they are watching, on, you're gonna get a lot of ugly, really nasty letters from the Trekkies. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when they are doing the bridge scenes. Um, yeah, they, they are very high energy scenes. Uh, a lot of them are very uh, emotionally driven. So you do want to feel a little bit of the chaos that's going on there. At the same time, it's a little hard to keep up with them half the time when you're not really focusing specifically on this person or this person, but the camera keeps jumping around to everybody in the scene and you don't really have enough time to settle on the two main people that may be of the focus or should be the focus of that scene. It's just JJ trying to make sure that everybody gets some love, man. That's all. That's all. Like I said, I can understand where the frustration can come from, but because he 
is able to pull off those scenes as well as he does as often as he does mm -hmm. uh even though it is a very easy style to feel amateurish we'll call it um it just goes to emphasize how creative and how uh professional he is that he can do that and not fall into the amateur traps that other directors have <clears throat> michael and bay do. Excuse me. He he's another video that we're gonna do. Mm, excuse me. Ooh, no, no, I should have. Mm, wow. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, uh, what else? Um, I think. Well, if you're talking about J.J. Abrams, you have to talk about the lens flare. <laughs> yes. Uh, for so. those of you that don't know what we're talking about, excuse me. Um, Super Eight and the first Star Trek. It's very oh. prevalent. It's like two times uh, every five seconds. Yep, it is very prevalent. Um, it's, I don't know why he decided to go with that for kind of his signature thing. Well, that's, um, he's even said in interviews, he didn't even realize he did it as much as he does. Yeah, like I think it was something that just kind of happened a couple times um, on Star Trek by accident. And then I think he just kind of rolled with it. Uh, you really see it in Super 8. He uses it a lot to kind of contrast. Um, I guess what's the easiest way to describe this? He tries to, or he doesn't try to do it. He basically uh -huh. really poorly lit, like very dark, moody scenes. Lens flare out of nowhere. Sure. Star Trek. Um, when they're under siege on the bridge of the Enterprise and all the powers out and everything like that, the hazard lights and the alarm lights that are going off like yep. every five seconds, the lens flare, lens flare, lens flare. <laughs> um, you know, almost almost kind of to try to, I guess, like attack the senses to kind of give you an idea okay. of like the freneticness of what's going on in the scene. Um, I think would be a good way to describe it. Yeah, uh, he, he has a tendency to use flashing lights in general yes. to emphasize action. Um, and because he doesn't ever slow down for heavy dialogue scenes, and he keeps those physically fast-paced, mm -hmm. um, it also is used to emphasize uh, emotional action, um, so that you see the flashing lights, your attention's immediately drawn to what's happening on screen, right. and hopefully it'll make you pay closer attention to what's happening. Which, by the way, not enough lens flare in, flash in uh, Force Awakens. I should have been getting a lens flare every time two lightsabers hit something. Like, I should have gotten a lens flare every time the lightsabers uh -huh. hit each other. Uh-huh. You, you, you disagree? Well, since that was the joke from the minute he was announced to be directing it, um, I'm actually okay with him choosing I'm to avoid. I'm not okay with that. I'm okay I should with have been hit with like 200 lens flares in that movie. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, have we missed anything? Uh, oh, uh, he, when he does take a second to slow down for some of the more emotional scenes, um, he relies heavily on the close-up shots of the actors. Um, as part of his improvisational camera work style, uh, he understands how hit or miss that would be to have the environment relay emotion. So he tends to trust the actors more to really impart the emotion of a scene uh, to the audience better yeah. than the camera. Like you really see it in Super 8. You saw it in you really the second Star Trek. Into Darkness, yeah, I was just about to say. Yep. Um, you see it in the first one too. Saw it in Mission Impossible 3 a lot. Yes, that was, I mean, that was his first feature, so yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, I'd say that, pretty much covers all the need to knows about J.J. Abrams' directing style. Yeah. Um, what you need oh, to know is oh, that he's an amazing director. That's what you need Almost to forgot know. one of the most important things about him, practical effects. Yes. Um, not just the explosions, but even down to the amount of color and uh, contrast that an yep. image is supposed to have. He tries to do that as much on set as possible rather than doing it in post-production yep. so that it feels real and tangible to the audience. Right, yeah, he is very much one of those believers that like the realest effect possible is the right effect. Yeah. 
Um, now, obviously, you know, there's scenes where you have to use CGI. Sure. But it's one of those where he uses it as little as possible. Yeah. Uh, but now I think we covered everything for JJ. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so hopefully this has helped you better understand JJ Abrams. So the next time you aren't sure if you're watching a JJ movie, you'll know what to look for to kind of verify if it is or isn't before, you know, going to IMDb and looking it up. Yeah. So uh, with that, uh, this is Brad Mike from Dallas Geek saying, see ya.